Good evening. What a joy. What a privilege to be able to share the word of our Lord with you even at this moment. It's such a joy to have you seated. I want you to understand that the word of our Lord is about to start. Get your writing notes. Get your writing part. Let us look into the perfect law of liberty together. And I want us to honor God's word by respecting this atmosphere, even of faith. Praise God. I have a word for you, and I'm sure that word will radically transform your life. Uh, we are moving forward. We are moving on on our Conqueror series, and God gave me a word that I'm excited about. If you have your Bible, wherever it is, I want you to grab it. Let's look at two openings together. Like I used to say, two openings may mean two hours, but no, I'm just joking. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians 3, 17. And then our hand of us for this series, Romans uh, and chapter 8 and verse 37. So let's read it very quickly. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. I'm reading from the New International Version. The Bible says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Romans chapter 8. Very quickly, let's just flip our Bible to Romans 8 and then verse 37. Bible says, No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For a few minutes this evening, I'll be sharing with us on the subject, the God of the now. Look at your neighbor and say, the God of the now. Praise God. Shall we pray? Father, thank you because the entrance of the word gives light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come tonight to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a red writer, and I write the word of life even upon the spirit of man. I declare, O oh God, that your word will have a free course, uh, even in every home, in every life. Uh, I declare, O oh God, that there shall be transformation after now. Let the reason for sending your word be fulfilled, O oh God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You know, at certain times, I'm speaking on the God of the now. At certain times, happenings around us make us to doubt the presentness of God. But he's always with us. Our God is always there. Our God is the ever-present God. Our God is not a God that leaves us even in times of trouble. The world has a way of thinking and believing that when things are tough, when things are hard, maybe God is angry with the person, or maybe God has left that person, or maybe that family is against God or something. But there is a God that is called the God of the now. We, be, we may begin to ask our time, uh, ourselves in difficult times and situations. And people may ask the question, hey, where is God? I thought they said God is faithful. I thought they said God is good. Why am I going through what I'm going through? Everywhere in the world today, people are asking that basic question. Where is the God of the Christian? Where is the good God they preach about? Where is the God who is right? The God who is good? I want you to know that the answer is that God is here. He has not left the heart. He is the God of the now. No matter what you are going through, folks, no matter what you, it is you're going through, God is in the now. He is always present. He is always there. That's why the Bible, one of the names Jesus was called, uh, even in the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, the Bible called his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. That word means God with us. Uh, Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Scripture told us again of that God. Emmanuel. God with us. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Scripture made it abundantly clear. The Bible says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the God we serve. He has given us a covenant. He has spoken by his own word that he will never leave the believer. God is therefore the God of the now. He is here in this present time. When we say that God is the God of the now, what are we saying? Does it mean that God will just give everything like a voodoo God <laughs> or like an ATM? He just gives you... Pump. No, we are not talking about the quickness of you having what you prayed for or something. No, that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about the ever-present access to the power and the presence of God. Wherever you are going through anything and whatever it is you are going through, the presence of the Lord is sure. The power of the Lord is also available. So when we talk about the presence of God, we are talking about an immediacy to the access you and I have with God. God is always with us. God is always there. We are also talking about the access to the infinite promises of God. We are talking about the access uh, at the disposal of the believer, the access to God's presence, the access to the promises of God, the access to the presence of God, and the access even to the word of God. Hallelujah. 
One of the names revealed to us by God, by himself, in the Old Testament, is that God, you know, when God, when God called Moses in the book of Exodus, the uh, Bible told us in Exodus chapter 3, the account was very clear in the book of Exodus. Scripture told us that there was a man by the name of Moses who was called by God. And after the discourse he had with God, after the back and forth, Moses looked at God. Moses was talking to God and Moses said, listen, when Israel asked me, who is he that called me? Who is he that is sending me? What should I say? And God said to him, say that the I am that I am. He was saying to Moses, I am the ever-present God. I love us to read Exodus chapter 3 verse 16. Scripture said, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am as sent me to you. Basically, God was saying, I am the self-existent one, the very present Lord and the God of the now. He says to his people, I am your deliverer. I am your helper. I am your healer. That's what God is even still saying at this present time. God is saying, you know, guys, no matter what's going on in the world, I am your restorer. I am your deliverer. I am your healer. I am your helper. I am your strength. I am your joy. I am the God who is with you. And I'm always there, even at this present hour. Someone is saying, you don't understand. I'm, I'm not feeling too good. I'm, I'm sick. <laughs> he is the I am. He is there with you. Someone is saying, I'm going through pain. He is the I am. He is there with you. Someone is saying, you don't, you don't get it. I don't have money in my accounts in this lockdown. <laughs> God is saying, I am with you. You are not alone. I am with you. There is this joy we have. There is this joy we have about the presentness of God. Why? Because he is there. Glory to God. Glory to God. He is the ever-present God. He is the God who was, who is, and is to come. Bible call him the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In the New Testament, there is also the provision of God, Jesus Christ, as the true son, even of the Father. Jesus Christ shared the eternal nowness of God. Jesus shared the eternal nowness of God. Bible says to us in John chapter 8 and verse 58, Jesus looked at them. <laughs> you know, Jesus said to them, before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> Those guys were going to stone him. What are you saying? You are using the same name of God. Because Jesus is God. 13 8 of the book of Hebrews. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Just as Jesus is the eternal God, he is there. He is the all-powerful one. He is the ever-present King of glory. The name Jesus is Yahweh saves. Jehovah is in the now. Available to us even now is the power, the presence, the spirit, and access to God. Our God is good. Our God is good. Allow me to say to you, I mean, that God is good. He's with you. He's the ever-present God. He's ever there for the believer. And I think this is the joy we have. This is the courage we have. This is the thing that makes us happy. In this COVID-19 lockdown season all over the nations of the world, wherever you're listening to me from, I want you to know God is with you. Somebody is locked down <laughs> alone in a house by himself. I want you to understand that God is with you. You are not alone. The I am is there. That's his name. He told, he told Moses, that is my name. I am that I am. Allow me to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that even at this time, at this season, that's what the name of God is. I am. I wish someone would just shout leap for joy and say, the I am is here. The I am that I am is here. The I am that I am is with me. Having said all of this, even though we say all of this, why is it that men doubt the goodness of God? Why is it that we doubt the presentness of God? Why is it that we doubt the God of the now? Don't forget, speaking on the Conqueror series, we're talking about the God of the now. Why is it that we doubt the God of the now? The first reason. There are many reasons. I'll just give you a few. The first reason why we doubt the presentness of this God is when we go through pain, sicknesses, and diseases. One of such times when people doubt God, doubt that this God is real, is when they are sick or when they have lost a loved one. They begin to doubt whether God is good. They, they, they say to themselves, God cannot be here. You remember in the Bible, the Bible told us about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. After Lazarus had died, Scripture made it abundantly clear to us. After he had died, Scripture told us that they, uh, after Jesus came to town, Martha looked at Jesus, and Mary looked at him, if you are here, my brother would not have died. That, that, he, was saying, he was saying, you are not present. 
You are not here. That's why people doubt God, his goodness, because they just feel in times of sickness or pain that if God was there, things would not happen to them the way it happened. Number two, when people doubt God in times of disappointment. When people are disappointed, they begin to doubt whether God is good. They begin to doubt the goodness of God. Listen to me, God is good and he's alive. And I know people who, when, they, when, when their fiancé leaves them, they begin to say, where is God? If God was there, my fiancé would not leave. Some people doubt the goodness of God. They doubt the presence of God. Why? Because they overlook them concerning a promotion at the place of work. And they begin to say, how would I be transferred or not get promoted, gotten promoted if God was good? I prayed, I fasted, but nothing happened. So they say, God is not there. God is not present. The Bible says the Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saved the crushed in spirit. Psalms 34 verse 18. The Lord is near. After Jesus did, many of his disciples were disappointed. They, they just went their own way. Some of them left. But some guys gathered together, and eventually after Jesus resurrected, they came back. And there was, Jesus appeared to them. And they said, no, Jesus is risen. <laughs> they told Thomas, <laughs> he looked at them and said, you guys are funny. You guys, you guys, you guys are just, you're just, you're just doing an April fool, April first thing. I'm not going to do that. I don't believe this except I see, except I touch, except I touch the hand, the nails. I don't believe. Why? Because he was disappointed. He was disappointed. Disappointment can make you even doubt God even when God changed the situation, turned the situation around. Number three, when they consider the prosperity of the wicked. Men doubt the goodness of God and the presence of God when they consider the riches, the wealth, the flamboyancy of the wicked. David almost said the same thing. I want us to read it. Psalm 73, 1 to 3. You know, Psalm 73, 1 to 3. <laughs> David started in verse 1 by saying, Truly, God is good to Israel and to those who are of a pure heart. He said that. <laughs> so he had, he had the belief that God is good. But then he began, after verse 1, he now began to consider what is going on in the world, the wickedness of the world. How is it that the wicked prosper? <laughs> and I want to read to you 2 to 3. I'd like you to go through 73, Psalm 73, 1 to 16 for yourself and by yourself. But for time, I will not be able to read. I just want to read two verses there, two and three. Bible says, but for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. It was a listen. Oh my God. How and why would God do this? I see the prosperity of the wicked. They begin to doubt whether God is there. But I want to say God is in the now. Giant of old that doubted the goodness of God. You should not join people in doubting the goodness of God. Oh, I love the writer of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 23, 17 to 18. He said, do not let, do not let your heart, your heart envy sinners. But be serious for the fear of the Lord all the day. For surely there is an hereafter. And your hope will never be cut off. Say to your heart, speak to your heart, I will not envy sinners. Speak to your heart, I will not consider the ways of the wicked. Because things are working for people, maybe G boys, Yahoo boys, whatever we call them, things are happening for them. Oh, somebody slept with the boss, got promoted, and then you begin to consider all the goodies that came because you were promoted. You can begin to doubt whether God is with you. We do not measure ourselves by comparing ourselves with other people. We are wise people. Number four, the loss of loved ones. People doubt the goodness of God when they are going through pain. Period of death and bereavement are hard times for many. Oh, because of this COVID-19 season and all of that, I was on Twitter just this week and I, I, I read of a, of, of a case of a lady put it online and she was saying she just lost her, her dad. And um, that, was, that was something painful for her. But she, she was saying that what is even more painful was the fact that she could not even see her father. She could not go near and say goodbye. What a word. What, 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 what a pain. It could not, she could not go close because the disease can get to her. And she was saying, I, I don't get this. She was broken, sad. She could not say goodbye. These are, these are things that make us say, can God really be for me? Can I be going through these things and God really be for me? Will God be looking when all of my family died in an auto accident. I, I sat down with a lady some years ago. She was telling me how her dad and mom and her sister died in an auto crash. And to begin to tell her that God is good, <laughs> that God is there, that God is near, difficult. Bible told us, but there are promises in Scripture. Psalm 30 verse 5. 
Scripture says, weeping may tarry for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. You see, it may be difficult, it may be hard in this season, but there is a joy coming. But like Paul said, I would like to say, and you see what Paul said is also related to that young woman on Twitter, and it relates to many of us. Listen, Romans 8, 38 to 39. Important part of scriptures. Bible says, for I am convinced, Paul was speaking, that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, <laughs> will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. He was saying, you know, God loves us so much that nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing. I want you to look at yourself and say, nothing can separate me from God's love. He loves me, is a certainty, is sure. Not even death can separate us from God. Not COVID 19 can separate us from God. His name, I am the God who is there, even now, the present God. Number five, why do people doubt the goodness of God? Because of stagnation, lack, and poverty. When people experience stagnation, it's a difficult place to be. When they see, despite all that they do, <laughs> despite all effort, all prayers, all fasting, it seems like their life is not moving forward. When you meet a first-class graduate who, has, who is jobless for like two years, or who is working as a counter in a bank, a first-class graduate, you begin to say, listen, this does not make sense to me. This does not make sense to me. We must hear at this point, remember a man by the name of Gideon. The Bible gave us an account of, the, of Gideon in the book of Judges chapter 6. I would like us to look specifically at the book of Judges 6, 12 to 14. And you know, the angel of the Lord appeared to him, the scripture says, and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? That is the question many people ask. They say, if God is with me, why is it that all of these things are happening to me? Why? Why am I going through the things I'm going through? If God is there, like you are making me to believe, why am I going through this? Why don't I have a job? Why am I sick? Why can't my body respond the way it's supposed to respond? Why? Why? Bible says, Gideon asked, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all these miracles which our fathers told us about? <laughs> you know, people say, why? The, our pastors told us that God is good. They, they tell us testimonies and miracles. Where are they? Why is it not happening to me? Listen. Father told us, say, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, listen to what God said. Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? God was saying, I am with you. Have I not sent you? Listen, God is with us. Situations and circumstances do not speak of the presence or absence of God. <laughs> there is a certainty. Whatever I'm going through, whatever situation is going on in my life, God is with me. Praise God. God is with me. If you have this attention, you will be a conqueror. We are talking about the conqueror series. You need to wake up every morning and say, I am is with me. The God of the now is here right now. The presence of God is here. Whatever you are going through, your situation cannot validate the presence of God or invalidate the presence of God. What validates God's presence in the life of the believer is the word of God. Is the word of God. What the Lord says? The word says is the I am that I am. And then number six, fear and anxiety. Some people are living terrified lives. They can't believe and they can't see that God is present. Fear has eaten deep into the fabrics of many people's lives. At the research I did recently, we discovered there are about 100 kinds of fear affecting people. <laughs> many people are just anxious. They don't even know why they're anxious. They're just afraid. Some people, you wake up in the morning and they say, ha, ha. I say, why are you afraid? They say, I don't know. I'm just fearful. I'm just anxious. An anxious mind cannot grasp the possibilities of God. An anxious mind cannot grasp the possibilities of God. Faith is believing in God and his word. Fear is believing in the devil and his words. Faith is believing in God and his words. Fear is believing in the devil and his words. <laughs> oh, Reverend George was talking to me recently and he said, fear is a magnetic force. Fear is a magnetic force. And that's scriptural. It's scriptural. That happened to Job. Job 3, 25 to 26. Oh, Job 3, 25, 26, made it clear. He said, the things I feared most has happened to me. What happened? Because he was afraid, because he was fearful, the fear attracted the negativity he never wanted in his life. John 14, 1. 
Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. We must guard our heart at this season. Now let me wrap this up here. Let me wrap this up here. Let me just, let me wrap it just here. I'm saying essentially, you know, we are still talking about the Conqueror series. I'm, I'm saying essentially, faith is an essential part of the Christian life. A Christian, a believer, you must have faith. Faith requires believers to trust God at all times, in all situations, in all seasons. One important lesson every believer must learn is that they should learn to walk and walk with God in faith and to wait on God. You walk with God and then you wait on God. Oh, it does not matter how long it takes, I'm going to trust him. I'm going to wait on him. God's ways are not our ways, our ways are, his ways are higher than our ways. Isaiah 55. 8 to 9 told us that. Even when it may seem like God is not doing anything, like God is on sabbatical in your life, you need to just wait on him. Wait, let me say, let me just, let me just tell you, okay, in case you believe that God is on sabbatical in your life, wait for him to resume. Amen. Wait for him to resume. Just wait on him. Wait on him. Because he will always pull through for us. He will pull through for us. The following scriptures that I want to give to us will help us in navigating through life. Even when we go through our times. These are principles. Principles of the word of God. 29, 11. Bible says, for I know the plans I have towards you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. <laughs> God's plan for you. It may not look like it now, but when you wait on God, it's going to give you a future and a hope. Romans 8, 28. And we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and for those who are the called according to his purpose. I tell people two things you have to mark out there. Number one, do you love God? Number two, are you called according to his purpose? If the answer is yes, <laughs> then begin to jubilate. All things are going to work for your good. First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 12. For now we see only a reflection in the mirror. Then we shall see him face to face. I know in part, but I know that day I shall be fully known. God has a plan for our life and many times what we see is a part of it. And because we are seeing the part, we are not seeing the complete picture, we are anxious. We are anxious. Many people are just seeing COVID. <laughs> if you will see the prophetic thing God is doing at this time, you will be happy. You will celebrate. Because when the whole picture comes together, you will see that our God is always a winner. He is always winning. He is always winning. He still has God. He still has the world in his hand. Oh, and, and God is still here. In all things, we must possess the attitude that prophet Habakkuk possessed. He said God is still here. Uh, Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. I'd like to read that for us. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. Bible said, though the fig trees does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and fields, though the olive crops fails, and the fields produce no food, <laughs> though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet how we rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the height. He was saying, everything around me may not look good. It may look like I'm not fruitful. It may look like I'm stagnant. I may be in pain right now. Doesn't matter. He said, I will still rejoice in the Lord. That's why I tell people, you must always keep the voice of worship. The voice of rejoicing, the voice of joy, the voice of praise. You must always keep it loud, even in your family and in your life. As I round up, let me quickly give you faith keys that will help you navigate trying times. Faith keys that will help you navigate in trying times. Trying times are almost sure. We live in uncertain times. We walk in uncharted territories. One of the things you must learn to do is to learn to have principles, to work principles, because principles always work, to have keys that will help you move in life. Praise God. Number one, your first key is that you must have the key, possess in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, that God is faithful. Amen. Say to yourself, God is faithful. Amen. Believe that, because it's the truth. Our God is faithful. One important way of navigation in our times is judging, judging God faithful. Some people may doubt the faithfulness of God, but you must judge him faithful. You must say God is faithful. One of the attributes of God is his faithfulness. When we say God is faithful, we mean he is trustworthy. We mean that he 
can be banked on, if I can use that word. It means he is perfectly faithful. Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 25 verse 1, O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done marvelous things. Isaiah was saying God is not only faithful. He said he is perfectly faithful. Ha! Huh. Glory to God. He is perfectly, perfectly faithful. Perfectly faithful. His faithfulness is why we can trust him. Jeremiah also said, The Lord's loving kindnesses indeed never cease, for his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Moses said, and he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. That's what God told Moses. He introduced himself. One of the things he introduced himself as is that I am a God who is faithful. The faithfulness of God. When we talk about faithfulness of God, there are three things that you need to hold clearly and hold on to in your life. Number one, that God performs what he promises. When we say God is faithful, what are we saying? So we say his faithfulness is his name. Faithfulness is his name. What are we saying? No, Reverend George has children and one of the names of those children, faith, faithful and faithfulness. He was talking about God, God. <laughs> faithfulness. What is he saying? When you call your child faithfulness, what are you saying? You are saying God will perform what he has promised. God promised in his word. His promises are sure. He solemnly swore by himself, by oath, and he always perform what he said. So when we say God is faithful, it means we can hold on to his word. His promises will come true. He fulfilled his promises with what? With Abraham, with Moses, with Israel, even with the promise of a new covenant, which we now live in. God is faithful. God's faithfulness means that he will hold fast to his promises. When we say God is faithful, that when we talk about the faithfulness of the Lord, what are we saying? Number two, we are saying God is true to himself. <laughs> God is true to himself. It will not change. He is the unchanging changer. Little one that the Bible called him 13 five Hebrews. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. <laughs> the faithfulness of the king is consistency, is immutability, is the, the fact that the Bible says in Malachi 3, 16, he said, I am the Lord, I change it not. That is why you have not been consumed. <laughs> Therefore, that you are not consumed is because you pray. It's because of God's faithfulness. That you have not died is not because you prayed or you spoke in tongues. <laughs> it's because God is faithful. Is true to himself. Oh, the mercy of the Lord is forever. Oh, his mercies are forever. God is faithful. Number three, God justifies the confidence of his children. That's it. No, 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 that, no, we're still talking about the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God. He justifies the confidence of his children. Therefore, when we talk about God being faithful, with faithfulness of the Lord implies trustworthiness. It implies that he can be trusted. If you commit our soul to God, he is a faithful creator. He will accept it and he will keep it. Very quickly, talking about faithfulness of God, that's the first key I gave you. You must judge God as faithful. Number two, you must have relentless trust in God. When we say relentless, it therefore suggests that some things will come against your trust in God. Some things will kick against your trust in God. Some things will want you to lose your trust in God. But you must be relentless in trusting God. The first one leads to the other. Why am I saying you should trust God? Why am I saying that? I'm saying you should trust God because he's a faithful God. A man who is not faithful should not be trusted. Therefore, faithfulness uh, precedes trustfulness. If I'm going to trust you, I, might, I must be able to judge you as faithful. He's the God of all the heart. You know that's what Job said, 13, 15. He said, he, he, Job was saying, I trust God. No matter what I'm going through, I trust him. Job, fantastic man. Fantastic. He said, don't slay me, yet I will trust in him. He said, I will maintain my own ways before him. Job 13, 15. That's why Job was a conqueror. He conquered everything the devil threw at him. Why? Because he knew, he understood. Don't you slay me. No matter what I go through, I will trust in you. Someone need to say to himself, no matter what I go through, no matter the circumstance, situation of my life, I will trust in him. I will maintain my own ways, even before, G before God. Trusting God is an act of stillness. You are not perturbed. You are not moved. You are not anxious. You know that your God will come true for you. Praise God. Oh, the psalmist says in 4610, 
of the book of Psalms. He said, be still and know that I am God. That I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. Believers must possess a high sense of serenity and calmness, even at this time. We must possess a high sense of serenity. The whole world may be anxious. The whole world may be running at task. Hey! Hey! My sanitizer is about to finish. Oh, hey! <laughs> be calm. He who holds you is not sleeping. He is there. He is present. That's the God. That's your father. He will keep you. Why? Because you have access to God. Number three, the third key for those who overcome in trying times, faith's keys that help you overcome is that you keep praying. You keep praying. Listen, your communion with God is your lifeline. Your communion with God is your lifeline. If the devil can cut you out of your lifeline, that's your death. <laughs> you must understand that your communion with him is your lifeline. Keep your communion with God. Prayer is the answer to many of life's troubles. When you pray, God gives or sends solutions. <laughs> when you pray, is it that he gives it to you or he sends it? Send it by an idea, send it via a relationship, send it via a man, send it via a spirit. But solutions come when we pray. And one of the things I've discovered this time that God is doing is that God is raising praying men. Praying men. We are coming back to God in communion. Now we are all locked down. We are all shut down. Before we say we don't have time for him. We don't have time. My job. I come back home tired. I don't have time. But right now, you are with God. <laughs> God has a good sense of humor. Praise God. <laughs> I'm not saying he caused this COVID, but he allowed it for a reason. He wants his sons back. He wants a relationship with us. You must keep your prayer line open. When you go through things, you must pray. James told us in 5.13 of the book of James, he said, is any among you afflicted? He didn't say let him dance. He didn't say let him sing Kaliso. <laughs> oh no. He says, is any of you afflicted? Let him pray. Prayer is the answer. If the whole world will turn to God in prayer, he said, call upon me in the day of trouble. Psalm 50 verse 15. He said, I shall rescue you and you will honor me. If we will go back to God, we will find answers. From my distress, the psalmist said in Psalm 118 verse 5. He said, from my distress, I call upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Allow me to say to you that there is dominion for us. Allow me to say to you that there is a large place for the believer. But we need to get through this time we need to navigate the right way navigate in trying times sir with prayer this is the old time for the old world to return to the savior time of distress is not a time of grumbling it's a time of turning to god when they came to Ezekiel and said get your house to order you are going to die the bible says he turn and face the wall and say lord remember Therefore, in trying times, when news that are bad comes in, uh, when things that you don't expect comes in, uh, it's not time to begin to, to, to cry. It's the time to turn to the world and let your cries rend the heavens. Uh. Oh, this is how to live the life of a conqueror. You win by praying. Praise God. You win by praying. That's number three. Number four, you need to have faith in the now God. Principles, have faith in the now God. The God that is present. The God of the now. Release your faith right now. Believe and receive your answers right now. Your faith has to be in the now. Faith is a present tense. It can't be put off to tomorrow. It can't be put off to yesterday. Your faith must be now. Abiding, present in the now. Oh, I have prayed. When will I get my answers? Now. Oh, I have prayed. When do I get the thing done? I receive the answer even now. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it. You see that believe that you have it, and then believe that you receive it, and then you will have it. You first of all believe that you receive, and then you will have it. When do you have it? When you receive it. When do you receive it? When you pray. When you pray, you should believe that I receive it. You don't say, I'll keep praying for the anointing of God. I know one day, one time, somehow God will anoint me. <laughs> no. You don't say, I, I pray for healing. I know someday, one day, one day, or some place, uh, in a time, in a season, God is going to heal me. No. You receive your answers. You receive your healing. You receive your promotion. You receive your job now. Faith is not believing that God will do it someday, sometime. Faith is demanding the promises of God in the here and the now. 
Bible says now, faith is. Or you can say faith is in the now. <laughs> oh, Hebrews 11 verse 6. The Bible says, for without faith it is impossible to please God. For they who come to God will believe that he is. So God is the is God. He's not a was God. He's not a would be God. Our God is in the now. Praise God. Praise God. The God of the now. The God of the now. He is here right now, right here, right with you. Wherever you are, God is here. Number five, very quickly, you need to learn to continue in the word of God. Continue in the word of God. Oh, let the word of the Lord abide in you richly. Uh, First Timothy 4.13, say till I come. Give attention, give attendance to reading, to exhortation and to doctrine. You must read the word of the Lord. When trials and affliction come, it's not the time to get out of the scriptures. You must stay there. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Stay in the word of God. Oh, John 8, 31, Jesus said something that I love so much. They said Jesus to those Jews who believed in him, if you continue my word, then are you my disciples indeed. He therefore says, you are not my disciples because you come to church. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. You are not my disciples huh? because you speak in tongues. <laughs> you may be born again. He said, you are my disciples, not because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Praise God, that's fantastic. He said, you are my disciples because you continue in my word. Now, anyone who continues in the word of God will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Anyone who continues in the word of God will walk in love. Anyone who continues in the word of God will have faith to live by. We must go back to the word of God. The word and the scripture is not something we should read when we are free. It's our life. The word of God is the source of life and light for the believer. Life and light for the believer. Life to make a life and quickening. That's what life does. Any dead thing in us, any dead thing in your life, when you take the word of the Lord, the life of God will come upon it. Praise God. And then when we say is the life and your light, it's a light to shed, to give you guidance, to give you counsel. That's what the word of the Lord is. The Bible says in Psalm 119, 105, the word is a light unto my feet, a lamp unto my paths. John 6 is 3. The word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Very important. Number six, this is the final one, final key I want to give you. You must learn to mix with faith patience. In this time and in this season, one important message you must have close to you is be patient. Tell your neighbor, be patient. Uh, many times believers give up too early or too soon. I used to tell our people, many times we win the devil by just staying in the ring longer than him. You must determine how we outlast the devil. <laughs> you must have a tenacity of the bulldog. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to stay until my miracle comes. I'm just going to keep doing this until I find answers. We must understand that just as faith works by love, another important leg of faith is patience. We must learn to be patient. What is patience? Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, problems, suffering, without becoming annoyed or anxious. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, problems, or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. I saw another definition yesterday. Another definition, waiting without complaint. That's what it is. Patience is waiting without complaint. Oh, yes. Patience implies suffering. Implies long suffering, enduring, or waiting as a determination of the will. Not because you don't have a choice, but because I know I'm going to just wait on God. Faith and patience work together. The Bible says this, and I love this, and I think you need to hold this fast to you, yourself. Hebrews 6, 12. We do not want you to become lazy. The Bible says, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. How did they inherit the promise of God? Via Faith and patience. If you don't have faith, you can't inherit it. But they say they inherit how? By faith and patience. Abraham is called the father of faith. Father Abraham. Oh, let us see what the writer of Hebrew wrote about him. Let us look at what he said. Because in Hebrews 6, 12, he said, these guys, those who, so he's not talking about one person. He said, those who through faith and patience. Those, many. Those, those. That means there are legends of faith. There are heroes of faith. Who became, who became what God had in mind. Who entered fully into the promise of God. And he was saying, how did they become? 
how did they enter into the promise of God? How did they became, become what God has in mind? He told us, faith and patience. Let's look at the case of Abraham. Hebrews 13 and 15, 6, 13 to 15. 6, 12 told us faith and, prom, faith and patience. And then 13 to 15. The Bible says, and I want to read this to us here. When God made a promise to Abraham, since there was no greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, the Bible says, Abraham received what was promised. He had faith, but he had to wait for his son to come. He had to wait for Isaac to come. Though he believed God, though he knew God was going to do what God said he would do, but he had to have patience. For the believer, I need to tell someone today that patience will, mean, will win many battles. We must understand that there is great potency in the mix of faith and patience. Great potency in the mix of faith and patience. This is not just patience. This is patience with an understanding. This is patience that has believed that God will do what he has promised. Patience hold on to God. It will come true to, for you. Receive your answer when you pray. You know, I said it, that you need to receive your answer now. You receive your answer now. But patience makes you wait till there be a physical manifestation of your answers. You don't just say, if he does not do it on Monday, I'm going to go talk to my brother. No, that's not it. You have to just believe that he's going to do it right now. In conclusion, let me say this to you. Living life as a conqueror is determined by your understanding of the presentness of God in your circumstances. Believe that he's present. And you must possess the right keys, right keys, right faith keys in navigating even through the uncertainty of life. I believe that if we will walk and if we will live according to the mandate and the plan and the mind of God for our lives, it is time for us to call him the I am that I am. He is the unchanging changer. I am the Lord, that he led thee. He's saying I am there. I, you can turn that song to I am the Lord, that blesses you. I am the Lord, that forgives. I'm, I'm the Lord. He is the Lord who is there. I am is his name. The ever present God. I want you to close your mouth eyes, bow your heart wherever you are. And I want you to begin to call forth that God. Begin to say, Lord, I believe you are here. I believe you are here. I believe you will do what you will do. Begin to pray. I believe, oh God, that you are here. Father, I believe you are here in my present situation. You know what's going on in my family? You know what's going on in my home? I believe you are here. I believe you are the I am. I judge you faithful. I know you are present. And I want you to begin to pray. Begin to talk to God. Begin to pray. Begin to talk to Him. Begin to talk to Him. Ask God, deliver me. Turn this situation around. Turn this situation around. Don't forget prayer is a key to getting out of life mess. Oh, you may be in a mess right now. Pray. Is any afflicted? Let him pray. It's a divine prescription. That's the divine prescription. Evangel preached a message called the divine prescription. That's, that's God's solution to affliction. Prayers. <laughs> pray. Brethren, pray. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. For a few minutes, will you just begin to pray in the spirit? Nika tula vroda shiatali haraba shatai. Pekua nandali afufue teya broko shiatai. The Spirit helps us in our infirmities. We do not know what we should pray for as we all. He helps us. He takes hold with us in prayers. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We don't like to stop, we don't like to stop our broadcast or stop our service without giving an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you are listening to me right here, audio stream, you're listening to this audio much later, or you are watching the video cast, whatever it is, I'd like to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. If you do not know Christ, if you have never given your life to Jesus, there's no better time than now. The present God is here. He's the I am that I am. And he would like you to just come to him. If you are making that decision for Jesus, if you are making that decision for Christ, I'd like you to just close your eyes and say this prayer after me. Everlasting Father, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sin. I know that I'm a sinner. 
I know I've done many things that are not according to your word. I know I'm a wicked person. I believe in the sacrifice of Calvary. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. And I accept Jesus as Lord over my life. And according to your word, I'm a new creature. All things are past. All things are new. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have said that prayer, I'm excited. I'm happy that you can give your life to Jesus. It's the best days, is the start of the best days of your life. I'd like you to know and to have an understanding that this is the best decision you can ever make. If you made that decision, we would like to hear from you. We would like to help you in your journey with God. I would like you to just send a message to us uh, via email, uh, dnhischurch at gmail.com. Or you can call our number. Or you can just drop a message at whatever platform on the, whatever platform you are hearing us from. And one of our ministers will get across to you. If you can, you can join a Bible-believing church close to you. Thank you so much. And I know that you will stay in the blessing of God. I'd like you to join us next week as we will be starting, as I was preaching a message that God gave me. How to become like God it's in this concrete series. You don't want to miss it. Get your neighbor, get your friends. And I'm excited at what God is doing, even on the heart, even at this time. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great time. And I'll hand, I'll hand you over even to somebody else who will take you further, even in this service. God bless you and have a great week.